okay so today we will be discussing the different rhythms which are coming on your icu and emergency department monitors see basically identifying these rhythms on 12 lead ecd is a little bit easy because you have all the 12 leads to uh, identify what is going on with the patient but identifying these rhythms timely on the icu monitors or er monitors is a very important thing and which everybody who is working in these department should be familiar with these rhythms so what we'll do today is we'll see how the rhythm generates and then in the simulator we have recorded all the rhythms maximum rhythms we have recorded and we'll try to identify these rhythms how we can easily identify these on the monitors we will not be discussing the causes or the detailed treatment of these rhythms because it, it will be a very long video so what we'll do is we'll just focus on how to identify these rhythms so we will first see how the rhythm generates and then we'll uh, see the different uh, rhythms coming on the ecg monitor so let's start so this is the conduction system of the heart you can see that this is your sa node sinoatrial node from here the fibers come goes to the av node then also to the other atria from av node bundle of is to the ventricles so you need to identify only four places from where a rhythm can originate when you are talking about identifying a rhythm on ecg monitor or icu monitor whether the rhythm is originating from sa node any rhythm which is getting generated from your sa node is called sinus means it's a sinus rhythm or sinus tachycardia or sinus bradycardia means anything which is generating from sa node now anything generating from av node is called a junctional rhythm usually a junctional tachycardia means it is at the junction of atria and ventricle you can remember by this thing and anything which is generating in the ventricles is called ventricle rhythms or ventricle tachycardia we will come to these in details one more thing the fourth one you need to remember any rhythm originating in the atria other than sa node is called atrial rhythm whether it could be atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter if it is not originating from sa node then it is called atrial rhythm you got this now we'll see the simulator this is our simulator and for the next 10 to 12 minutes we'll focus on identifying the rhythm let's start now what you can see here i'll stop there is a p there is a p wave the followed by pr interval there is a narrow complex qrs complex and it is pretty regular so rhythm so this rhythm is originating in the sa node it's a normal rhythm qrs complex is narrow remember any qrs complex which is originating in uh, through the atria and crossing through the av node will be a narrow complex and any qrs complex which is a broad uh, which is a broad complex is getting originated in the ventricles so qrs complex generating through passing through av node is, will be a narrow complex and any qrs which is generating in the ventricles themselves will be a broad so here p wave is there there is a narrow qrs complex and it, this is a pretty regular rhythm sinus uh, rhythm everybody knows this so it's a sinus rhythm so even the monitor is saying that now let's see watch carefully mm, it is, oh this came up so it's a broad qrs complex came up let's see how it is coming so it is there is an occasional uh, broad qrs uh, coming it between the sinus rhythm so it will be called unifocal uh, premature ventricle contraction so pvcs so it is because it is generating and it is coming prematurely means p wave should come here here and before coming of the before uh, coming of the next p wave this prematurely came up from the ventricle so it, it is called premature ventricle complex or contraction because why it is ventricular because it's broad if it had been a um, uh, narrow complex one we could have called pscs let's see and because it is of uniform morphology and it is coming singly so it is unifocal poly uh, premature ventricle complex 
for contractions. Let's see. Fine, same, same rhythm. PP, PVC is coming. Now, okay. So now they have started coming in pairs. So usually we call it bigemini or couplets and both are orig originating from uh, ventricle so it could be by we call is bigemini or couplets but they are also premature ventricle complex see they are coming in the pairs they are coming in the pairs and this is sinus in between the sinus these pvcs are coming couplets are coming okay fine Uh, now this is also a PVC because it's a broad complex but its morphology is different it could be a PVC unifocal but no another VP, uh, PVC has come whose morphology is different from the previous one one more PVC has come whose morphology is different from the previous two so it is means the ventricular PVCs are coming from multiple areas not from a single point in the ventricle so they are called multifocal premature ventricle complex multifocal PVCs you got my point they are originating in the ventricle so they are a broad complex they are coming prematurely before the next beat therefore premature and if it is coming of uniform morphology then it will be a unifocal if they are coming in pairs that will be a couplet or bigemini and if they are coming in different morphologies means they are originating from different uh, portions of the ventricle then there will be multifocal PVCs okay so these are multifocal PVCs this is different this is different mm, sorry uh, you, uh, this is uh, now something happened now you see you see the morphology of this P waves these are rounded P waves these are rounded P waves these are rounded waves, but the P wave here is different and if you can identify the duration R to R interval this has come prematurely but the complex is narrow so this has not generated in the SA node because the sinus node uh, P wave is morphology is different so it has generated in a place other than the SA node that's why it will be an atrial rhythm we'll call it atrial rhythm and it is a narrow complex and it has come up prematurely so it will be a premature atrial complex or contraction so PACs these are PVCs and these are PACs okay this video is a little bit shaky sorry for that I recorded with my mobile only so you see this uh, this is PAC because P wave is different other than the SA node normal uh, uh, QRS and has come prematurely okay one more important thing you need to know whether it's a PVC or whether it's a PAC you see these are coming regularly regularly and if it comes prematurely there is a pause there is a uh, compensatory pause and the next rhythm comes at its own pace suppose it every one second the there is a uh, sinus uh, rhythm means p wave came at one second then at two second then at three second then at four second but if the pac comes at 4.5 second so the next beat will not come at fifth second it will come at the sixth it will come at regular interval even if there is a premature uh, ventricular or atrial complex it will uh, show a compensatory pause and uh, pause and next beat will come at the scheduled interval so p wave uh, qrs 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 or p wave p wave p wave premature then there is uh, there is a no uh, beat at this point and it came at its scheduled next duration okay so this way you can identify pscs and pvcs now these are PACs okay now, okay now you see here 
this is a normal sinus beat because P wave followed by QRS complex narrow complex but there is no P wave there but there is a narrow uh, QRS complex here there was a P wave which was different from the sinus P wave means it was uh, P wave was generating from something atria so we call it PAC uh, premature atrial complex or contraction but here there is no P wave so it has originated from somewhere around the AV node so at the junction so it's a junctional premature complexion you, you, you got my point so it's a junctional premature complex it has originated from the uh, AV node somewhere around the AV node it, because P wave is not there okay again there is no P wave premature junctional complex okay so it, this is sinus rhythm again junctional complex premature junctional complex okay this is also followed by a pause you can see here there is a sinus rhythm there is a premature junctional complex and there is a pause and then the scheduled next beat okay now this is turned to be a tachycardia anything above 100 is called tachycardia anything below 60 is called bradycardia so it could be sinus bradycardia it could be junctional bradycardia or ventricle escape rhythm anything above 100 we call it tachycardia so here the suddenly rhythm has changed to tachycardia because each uh, qrs complex has is been preceded by p wave which is different with uh, morphology from the sinus so it is a atrial tachycardia it's not sinus tachycardia it's atrial tachycardia because the p wave morphology is different from the one which is coming from the sinus node so this is tachycardia and tachycardia originating due to the atrial rhythm so other than the SA node so it's uh, atrial tachycardia okay one clue uh, atrial tachycardia has usually the rhythm uh, uh, rate less than 140 or 150 it is it doesn't go beyond that usually if it is something if it is more than that you should think of some other supraventricular tachycardias or AVRT or AVNRT sort of things okay so this is atrial tachycardia now everybody can appreciate this is saw, to, uh, uh, saw tooth pattern so it is atrial flutter so this is flutter this is this is definitely flutter atrial. again not sinus flutter it's atrial flutter because it, it is not originating from the sinus node means SA node uh, other from other uh, place uh, in the atria so it's atrial flutter so it's atrial flutter still atrial flutter I'm again sorry for this shaky video because I recorded from handheld mobile oh now something interesting happened now this was regular atrial flutter was regular now Q, neuro QRS complexes the, and it is become irregular very simple no P wave present before these complexes and there is a chaotic isoelectric line you see there is a chaotic so it is from different different places in the atria this rhythm is getting generated and we call it atrial fibrillation irregularly irregular rhythm is called atrial fibrillation so narrow complexes irregular rhythm no p wave chaotic baseline so this is atrial fibrillation most of you identify this rhythm easily see this is not flutter atrial fibrillation okay uh, let's see what next comes still atrial fibrillation irregularly irregular oh something has changed okay so you see now we can there is a rhythm in which there is a p wave but uh, it is inverted means from atria to AV node to ventricle this direction if it is there it will be positive P wave but if it is somewhere from the junctional area means around the AV node the P wave direction goes upside 
uh, from junctional it originate and go upside so it will be negative so it's a junctional rhythm at times in junctional rhythm you can have a you can see a p wave which is usually inverted or you may not see a p wave it get at times it get buried into the qrs complex so it's a junctional rhythm and you must appreciate the junctional rhythm um, uh, is not tachycardic it's uh, it's below 100 so it's just a junctional rhythm with inverted p Still the junction. Now this nobody should miss. Anybody who is in the ICU should be able to identify the one rhythm which is VT, ventricular tachycardia. Why? Broad QRS complexes originating in the ventricles that's why they are broad and the rhythm is uh, rate is more than 100 that's why we call it tachycardia so ventricle tachycardia because all all uh, complexes morphology is same so it's a monomorphic vt also we call it monomorphic vt so this is a ventricular tachycardia vt check the pulse if it if it, it is a vt with pulse and hemodynamic stable you can try more uh, pharmacologic interventions if it is not shock the patient if it's pulseless vt do shock the patient okay vt 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 okay now this has changed this has changed okay the rhythm has changed you see the complexes are not of the equal sizes they are little bit small and different morphologies so this is vf now vt has converted into ventricular fibrillation so there are different types if there is a broad they are called coarse vf if it is a small complexes vf then we call it fine vf um, so these are the distributions so coarse uh, uh, ventricular fibrillation fine ventricular fibrillation but um, uh, all in all you need to identify that it's a vf do cpr shock the patients it's a deadly rhythm so this is this v, this was vt and now it has converted into vf this is a coarse uh, vf still CPR and shock the patient okay okay still VF nobody is doing anything just watching oh the complexes you see complexes has become fine so it's it's a V5 fine V5 fine in fine VF the complexes are also very small this is routine vf previous was was coarse uh, vf this is fine vf this is wine fear deadly rhythm okay so this is vf the patient is going to collapse or already collapsed if we don't treat we will get a flat line oh see you see we all were watching the video we were doing nothing and now it's a flat line and whenever there is a flat line in your department in the ICU uh, there is a protocol called flat line protocol in flat line protocol you first see the patient then check the leads whether it's a disruption of the leads whether the patient is conscious at times if it may happen the patient is fine then there is a lead disruption because of that it could be a flat line so there is a flat line protocol followed in every ICUs actually don't forget the flat line protocol oh the rhythm restored somebody has done the CPR and we had a sinus rhythm no 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 no, no. this is not sinus but because you see there is a p wave pr pro interval is prolonged and there is a noro complex p wave pr interval is prolonged more than 0.2 seconds and there is a qrs complex 
then again PR interval the PR interval looks pretty same in all these leads so this is first degree uh, block first degree block so P wave is generating from SA node going to the AV node a little bit of delay is there nothing else so it can be a normal thing and nothing needs to be done so it's a first degree block you see you see PR interval is prolonged but it's constant earlier P wave used to be here but now I mean, there is a PR interval is prolonged so it's a first degree block not to worry about this okay Now let's see what happens. Oh, so one beat has dropped. What happened? We need to see. Okay, so something interesting is happening. Earlier PR interval used to be constant. Now you see there is there is a P wave, normal PR sort of QRS complex, fine. But now PR is prolonged, and PR is further prolonged and then after P a complex is dropped. So P was coming regularly but uh, the Q, uh, PR interval starts getting prolonged in a regular fashion. Means suppose you an employee, newly joined employee in your uh, ICU. He came at 9 o'clock uh, on first day, then at 9.10, then at 9.20 and then at 9.30 and you know down next day he won't come. So you are well prepared that whenever he comes at 9.30, the fourth day he will not come. So it's a, you can predict the pattern. So it is not so significant at times, usually pacemaker is not required, but if his surgery is done or patient is planned for cardiac fitness, they may advise something for this. So, but it is type two, but it is Mobitz type one block. It's a, it's a type two block, but it's Mobitz type one block in that category so pr interval gradually getting prolonged and then one beat, beat is dropped in mobis type 2 what happens you hire a new employee he comes at nine o'clock nine o'clock nine o'clock and suddenly on fourth day he doesn't comes or he comes two times and on third day he doesn't comes you cannot predict that whenever when this uh, fellow will come to the ic or not ic so it is unpredictable then it creates a mess so mobis type 2 block needs to be taken care of pacemaker is required that's why so mobis type 1 pr interval gradually getting 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 prolonged and then is there is drop in mobis type 2 it's unpredictable it's coming 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 at regular interval and suddenly had a drop so let's see so it is mobis type 1 it's coming coming little bit delay and then drop pr there 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 so PR prolong prolong and then we know it's going to drop so move it's type 1 move it's type we call it when Quebec phenomena uh, this is also known as when Quebec phenomena type 1 block Okay, okay, okay. Now here comes Mobitz type 2. Normal PR, normal PR, normal PR, normal rhythm, and then suddenly had a drop. P wave not followed by any QRS complex. So it's Mobitz type 2 block. Normal PR interval, rhythm coming, 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 and suddenly had a drop. It's more risky. So that's why Mobitz type 2 block needs pacemakers. Coming, coming, other than drop, we, we never know coming coming and then suddenly it is dropped okay it's fine coming drop i think there is some change here you see now you see there is a p uh, pqrs this beat is p wave there is no pqrs here there is no p there is a qrs sort of p wave uh, but not followed by any there is a p wave peer interval is irregular here what very short and either so you can see the these are p waves one two three four five so p wave are marching at regular intervals and qrs are marching at their own intervals so 
there is a complete dissociation the p wave are generating at their own pace and the qrs are generating at their own place so there is no connection between atria and ventricle so it is a complete heart block definitely going to require a pacemaker i think in this simulator there is a uh, it's not showing properly usually in chb the rhythm generates the ventricle generates their rhythm from the ventricle so qrs is usually a broader one it's not narrow complex whenever you see a chb patient usually the ventricle rhythm is a broad qrs complex and what is the rhythm of the patient we will say if we call to the consultant what is the rhythm we are saying the ventricle rhythm is we need to say it's a 35 per minute or 30 per minute or 40 per minute will you will not tell the p wave rhythm because p wave are generating they are not going to the ventricles it, they are not contributing to the contraction of the ventricles it's the ventricle rhythm which is contributing to the contraction of ventricles and maintaining the blood pressure so it's the ventricle rhythm which is being counted so uh, this is complete heart block no no association between p wave and the qrs complex usually qrs complex are uh, broad if the block is a little bit higher around the av node then you can have narrow complexes chv but usually we have a broad qrs so this is broad qrs uh, sorry complete heart block you see p wave p wave p wave p wave it is it is merged here qrs 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 okay so a complete bar mm, okay 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 this is i think uh, torsi de pontis this is uh, multifocal tachycardia what you can see is tachycardia axis is changing in the ventricle and you see Uh, the complex is getting up and then complex is getting down it is not vf vf is a very fibrillating sort of uh, rhythm this is a uh, torsi de pontis is a broad uh, axis changing tachycardia it's a multifocal uh, sorry multifocal ventricular tachycardia torsi de pontis very deadly you need to shock the patient magnesium usually uh, is the thing to which these people responds but you need to identify any broad complex tachycardia even if you don't understand consider as a vt 99% of time it's a vt uh, this is changing axis so this is this is torsi de pontis Okay. Still, torsets is going on. Okay, torset. And now sinus rhythm is restored. P wave, P wave, QRS complex. Sinus rhythm is restored. So th this was this was about rhythms. Uh, now we'll see some ST changes. What are some few ST changes you can pick up? or t wave inversions and we'll discuss one very important rhythm so we have gone through all the rhythms and finally our patient is in the sinus rhythm this uh, this rhythm um, we are not able to appreciate p wave clearly so it is supraventricular tachycardia it could be uh, avnrt or evrt but it's difficult to pick up on single lead for, for all practical purposes if you say it's a svt or ev and rt then also it's fine and the rhythm in in these uh, ev and rt or evrt is usually more than 150 it's somewhere around 180 so uh, you can differentiate you can use this tool to differentiate from atrial tachycardia or sinus tachycardia they are usually below 150 140 so no p wave we can identify it's a t wave i think usually so this is svt 
we have slowed down but here also we can, uh, can if we can appreciate it's a p wave i would say it's a p wave so it is sinus tachycardia but this this was um, uh, svt this could be uh, sinus tachycardia okay here you can see the t wave inversions t wave inversion if you see a new t wave inversion in your ecg is a sign of ischemia you need to pick up right many times we see many resident staff picks up ischemia on the monitor itself so t wave inversions t wave inversions are there sinus rhythm because originating from the sinus node but t wave inversions are there okay so here st has elevated see you but it's a concave st usually the concave st elevation is seen in pericarditis in uh, in mi patient there is a convex convex st elevation but on uh, single uh, strip ecg it's very difficult to identify whether it's pericarditis or uh, mi for all practical purposes if you see an st elevation on uh, icu monitor then you should consider as a sign of mi and should intervene immediately go for a 12 led ecg okay so it's a so mi but pattern is of pericarditis but we'll consider it as an mi because it's a single strip now now we have developed a q wave q wave so p wave followed by q wave it's an evolved mi usually in co patients uh, in whom the mi has evolved okay so this is a broad qrs broad qrs complex p wave uh, it is not coming alone it is not coming alone there is a p wave followed by a broad qrs complex so it's a lbb sort of pattern Uh, if you, even if you don't identify at this level not an issue but vpc is doesn't come uh, with a p wave before they originate from the ventricle itself here there is a bundle branch block the p wave has generated the rhythm gone through the av node but there is a block in the bundle branch so the qrs got widened okay so it's an lbb pattern anything more left something is there okay st depressions looks like a hypertensive pattern but any st depression on ecg initially if you pick for the first time consider as a sign of ischemia or other metabolic disorders hypokalemia sort of things in the icu but any new change in the st uh, segment whether it is going up or whether it is going down uh, we need to be alert here it seems to be a hypertensive heart okay so stt changes you need to identify in the icus anything more left i think it's over okay so uh, the, these were the rhythms on the monitor on the simulator two rhythms we missed and out of that uh, one uh, is very important i'd like to tell you uh, let's see okay so this is edo ventricular rhythm accelerated edo ventricular rhythm so basically ventricular rhythm it if, it if it is less than 50 we call is ventricular escape rhythm and if it is more than 110 or 100 we call is tachycardia ventricular tachycardia these rhythms are originating in the ventricular if they are between 50 to 100 then we call is ventricular edo ventricular rhythms accelerated edo ventricular rhythm usually it is seen in uh, reperfusions uh, when you thrombolyze an mi with uh, any uh, thrombolyzing agent there you see this accelerated edo ventricular rhythm you can see there is no p wave so it is not originating in the sinus it is originating in the ventricular and its rhythm rate is somewhere between uh, 70 to 80 so it's accelerated edo ventricular rhythm it's a good rhythm and uh, it is usually seen in patients of reperfusions from mi this one rhythm we missed is sinus bradycardia which also you need to be alert on time so that you can start if it is a, it's a impending sign of cardiac arrest so sinus rhythm uh, originating from uh, uh, sinus node narrow qrs complex 
but the rate is less than 60. So sinus bradycardia is the rhythm which also you need to identify very quickly because we need to start CPR if the patient is collapsing. Okay, so that's all for today's video. I hope now those who are working in the ICU and emergency department will get a fair idea how to identify the single lead ECG on your ICU monitors. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask in the comment section or you can go to ICU dieting slash forums and discuss anything. Our team and other members of our community will be happy to respond to you. Thank you.